Over 1 million Microsoft Flight Simulator pilots, new planes incoming from Aerosoft, fixes and patches, and on top of that, Microsoft discuss some of the current issues with the game. There's been a lot going on this week, so let's jump in and take a look. Microsoft Flight Simulator has been the largest ever launch title for Xbox Game Pass for PC, with over a million people downloading the sim. It appears that these numbers don't include digital sales from Steam or from the Microsoft Store, so one way or another, a lot of people have tried out the new game. Other stats on the sim are particularly interesting, and you can see these on the screen right now, and that standout one of 1 billion miles flown is an impressive figure for sure. Developer and publishers Aerosoft recently held a special event called Next Sim, where they discussed their upcoming products. Of particular interest to Microsoft Flight Simulator players will be the company's list of upcoming third-party planes. It's likely that Aerosoft's new planes will rank among the most complex and accurate planes available for the sim, and these have been built from the ground up specifically for the new title. These include purposely built brand new models. As a reminder, Aerosoft have been working very closely in partnership with both Microsoft and Asobo Studio in assisting with the creation of the software development kit. This means that Aerosoft are very much involved with the sim and have a direct experience of developing for it. This in turn will theoretically give them a great opportunity to create extremely advanced planes. The new upcoming plane is the CRJ and will come with three different models, the 700, 900 and 1000. You can see some footage on the screen right now. For the full Aerosoft video though, do check out the links in the video description. Aerosoft's intent is to get the CRJ released this year, however, for now at least, they cannot 100% confirm that. Additionally, Aerosoft will also be releasing the Twin Otter, along with their own versions of the Airbus airliners, which include the uh, A319, the A320, the A321 and the A330. These ones are likely to be a lot further out, however, and it's something that's worth pointing out. It might not be known to some of the new flight simmers out there that just how much work actually goes into developing each plane. The projects uh, Aerosoft have mentioned so far represent at least two and a half years of work for a full development team. I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing more on these. It's no secret that Microsoft Flight Simulator has suffered from a number of bug and performance related problems. The recent patch launched this week sought to begin addressing some of these, and among other things, it had a heavy focus on dealing with the installation issues that many people were still suffering from. Microsoft and Asobo Studio, however, have highlighted that they are committed to not only fixing the current issues with the game, but also supporting it for the long term. The next patch for the sim, that's patch number two, doesn't currently have a release date, although the new roadmap seems to tentatively suggest on or around the 24th of September. Microsoft will confirm this at a later date. The new patch will be focused on the in-sim experience, with full patch notes coming later. However, the latest feedback snapshot gives us some insight as to what we might be able to expect, so let's take a look at that now. The first thing to note then is that nearly all of these top issues are in one way or another currently being addressed. The only one or the only two that aren't currently being addressed is the incorrect ATC phraseology, which is certainly a big problem for anyone who wants to use the flight sim for its intended purpose. And another problem that currently isn't marked one way or another is the turboprop engine logic. Meanwhile, the following issues have been significantly improved in the upcoming September update. Atmosphere, wing bug in live weather, unrealistic weather interaction, load times into the sim and back to the main menu, performance, uh, drops caused by a glass screen, so that would be such as the G1000 and the others near and near large airports. Also performance, again, stutters on CPUs with lower thread counts. Insufficient inertia and landing gear overspeed simulation will also be fixed in the same update. Personally then, I'm especially keen on seeing some of these performance issues fixed, which I know have been causing a lot of trouble for many people out there, regardless of the specifications they've got for their PC. The following issues have been marked as in progress, so it's possible these might be fixed either in September or maybe sometime after September. Autopilot, various bugs and improvements. Now this one is a particular problem. Quite often I've found that Autopilot actually works very well, but on other occasions it does the most ridiculous things, such as diving straight into the ground or pulling the plane into constant loops. It's something I would prefer to see fixed sooner rather than later, However, it might not be an easy fix. 
Elsewhere on the list, the G1000 and the G3000 Garmin systems need finishing off. They haven't got all the systems in place yet, they're actually not fully functioning. And there's also a variety of world terrain issues, which I think most people will be aware of at this point. Microsoft have also marked completing the SDK, AI Traffic and VR as in progress on their top wishlist section. So that's something we can expect to see more progress on over the coming months. Looking towards the future of the sim, the latest roadmap gives us a glance on what will be coming up over the future. Microsoft's Around the World series will continue. There are also six new partnership series videos scheduled for release at a pace of two episodes per month. Now, I'm really curious to see who else Microsoft have partnered with for this sim, as there's certainly a lot of companies involved, and many of them have already had a partnership video. Late October and late November are also marked with new patch updates, and this is in line with the plans of a one major patch for each month. As this month's update is the in-sim one, it seems likely that the next month should be a world update, and I believe the one after that is probably going to be a paid update, including new content. And the rumours are that helicopters might be included there, but, you know, take that with a pinch of salt for now, I guess we'll have to see. That then brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.